looking at the real deal now. Ooh. Gonna kick this sorry ass out on the street. How's it going, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the Lowdown Show Remix right here on No Holds Barred Wrestling Podcast. Your Canadian wrestling podcast that talks about the WWE and NXT and No Holds Barred and anything we say, pun intended. You can follow the podcast on Twitter at No Holds Barred. WP you can also follow myself at Real Kyle Masters, and you can also follow my co host at Corporate Cappy on Twitter as well. We are also available to follow on Instagram at No Holds Barred WP, all one word. If you want to listen to us on the go, we are available to listen to on iTunes, Stitcher Radio, and Spreaker. Spreaker is a glorious podcast app that is available for all Android and Apple devices. Go give that a download. You can chat with us live on the air and listen to all previous episodes of the podcast. We also have a YouTube channel, youtube.com. Slash NHBWR, where we have a lot of other video content, such as the podcast itself, and 2K content and unboxings, all that jazz is all available for you on there. So go hit that subscribe button, that bell icon for all upload updates. I'm your host, the self-proclaimed greatest host, Kyle Masters, and every week I am joined by my co-host. He is the blissful boss, Mr. Corporate himself, Corporate Cappy. Asa. Saw, and um, I am also um also the self proclaimed greatest host and the self proclaimed sickest host. Sickest I'm still host. under the weather. My God, just this thing won't ever, just won't go away. So I apologize today, guys, if it's a little bit of a rough podcast and I sound rough and <coughs> I I go through a little uh, stages where my voice probably goes away. But uh, just bear with me here as I try to get through this. <laughs> it's been a rough couple of days. Like I've been sick since like I think last Thursday. It's been it's been rough, but uh, yeah. Try to I didn't fight even through know if it. You're here. gonna be good enough to do the show today. <laughs> yeah, I didn't know either. I, I've been taking meds like crazy, and uh, it's not taking more. You've been taking more pills than fucking Jinder has. There are more his pills clean and, diet. Uh, or his brother Roman over there. So, <laughs> <laughs> I can't believe that man. He, he's in trouble. He's in trouble, man. He's uh he's got himself uh, if if it's true we gotta wait we gotta wait for all the details to come out so maybe maybe we'll do uh WWE headlines this weekend you no know, if I'm feeling better man <laughs> my head is just throbbing so it's, it's, it doesn't look like it's getting better I think I might have the flu so it sucks it's a good thing we don't do the podcast right across from each other I'd probably tell you to not come I wouldn't have done it no <laughs> <laughs> in the chat we have glorious Greg what is going on the glorious one is here we also have Cubic Girl one two five little Miss Tricks is here the and usual. ticked off that my network is off and we have nine inches of snow outside oh, okay Oof. you want to know what we're I'm blissed off about okay is they have been promoting this fucking mix match challenge thing for like a month now not once did they ever say that this was going to be U S exclusive only. Not to mention, you know, all the people in Canada and overseas right. that want to tune into this thing. And we tried to look, go in last night. And it's like, oh, Facebook uh, Watch is only available in the U.S. It's like, oh, thanks for telling us that for the last month, trying to promote this damn thing. Yeah, a lot like, of people. I have go, a, WWE. Yeah, a lot of people <laughs> friends was on Twitter overseas were having that problem. Like, oh, so literally, it's just U.S. people only. So another one of thanks. those cases. Great. Why, did, why didn't they say that? Why were they promoting it for a month and saying, like, oh, tune into this? And they don't use a little disclaimer, U.S. residents only. Yeah, I'm so. shocked, like, they, they would do that. Like, you you know, you, you get more viewers. They're, like, bragging how many viewers they got. They got, like, 145,000 uh, viewers for that. I'm like, you probably would have gotten more if you had it expanded or put it on the network. Why, you, why didn't they do it on the network? You would have gotten more network subs. I understand that. I don't know. I we had to find this like really crappy stream on YouTube, and they um, kept going down. I don't know. It was awful. I didn't even get to watch the end of the match. It was bad. Thanks WWE again for your great promoting. Yeah. <laughs> so we were we were pretty upset yesterday. So and it looks like we're not really going to be caring much about this tournament since we won't be able to see it at all. Nope. Like it's not it's not going to matter every week when it comes on because we won't be able to watch it. And I tried forever to look for a stream, so it is what it is. Um, there also, there is no video version of this podcast. I'm I don't look the best right now. I haven't shaven in like <laughs> over a week, so I'm in like sick mode. So I'm not doing a video version of this podcast for this week. Just audio version, and I'll put the audio version of it on YouTube after. So uh, no video for this week. If anyone you want to see Kyle Masters in his Paul Bearer. Uh... 
version. Anyway, Paul Bear like the face, white man. face. He literally as white as a ghost right now. It's crazy. <laughs> but uh, interesting episode of NXT this week. We can talk about that. And uh, we can slightly talk about Raw and SmackDown. SmackDown was very, very boring. I even got called out on Twitter for being called boring. I don't know what the hell you guys all saw out there. That To me, that was like the most boring episode of SmackDown I've ever seen. They're missing a lot of points on it. It really looked Russian put together. Like we were missing the main storyline didn't take place at all during that whole show. And all we did literally was centered around the U.S. tournament. And they brushed that all in one day. Yeah, which is weird. And they gave it to Bobby Roode. As awesome as that is, I don't think Bob Uri should have won just yet. Again, this is another case where Derby loves the quick fire stuff. And we've seen it before, a.k.a. Charlotte's uh, uh, the, the, the ending of the streak of Charlotte last year, and among other things. They just, they just love the quick fire stuff. I don't know why. They could have waited. Bobby Roode's title win should have been at a great, like a big pay-per-view like WrestleMania rather than just a plain old SmackDown, rush put together SmackDown. Like, it felt lackluster. And now, so you're telling me that Bobby Roode's going to lose it to Jinder at some point? Like, why Why isn't it Roode beating Jinder for it? Why is it... it you know Jinder's going to win it at some point. Yes, Cuba Girl. Braun killing the show was awesome on Raw. That was interesting. We found out how bad, more bad of an actor Kurt Angle is from Raw this week. <laughs> Maybe the worst actor I've ever seen. Oh, my God. There were $12 million. <laughs> It's just botching of stuff like Stephanie McRan. Stephanie McRan. Her name was Stephanie McRan. It's a good thing Kurt Angle's here to remind us. Nothing is worse than Kurt Angle looking or answering his phone. Oh, like, when he answers his cell phone. There was a big botch with the cell phone, too. He said he was like, going to call the cops and it, and it started ringing. I was like, what? <laughs> so you're going to call the cops, but some, who's calling you? Maybe it was Stephanie McRan, yeah, but then Stephanie like it McRan. stopped ringing after two rings because it went back to Braun tipping over the truck, <laughs> oh, which had like a billion yeah. camera angles that they switched from every other oh, second. So... I didn't mind it, but like, why did they have to switch to every single camera angle every two seconds? <laughs> it felt really it, weird. It, it made it feel fake. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. if they would have just showed him just knocking the thing over, like, why was there a camera on the truck and all this stuff, like? Sometimes they sometimes they just overproduce shit that they don't need to. I think the most interesting thing we got is we actually have seen a Kevin Dunn sighting. That was yeah. the most shocking part of TV. Like this guy, you guys have to understand. If you don't know anything about Kevin Dunn, this guy literally makes sure that he doesn't get seen by public anywhere. Like this guy is the most hidden guy in the WWE out of anybody. And he's more hidden than when they bring back a wrestler and try to hide him from the other talent. Like Kevin, you never see Kevin Dunn anywhere. Only the talent see Kevin Dunn, and that's when he has a, a producer note to go over them with. You never see Kevin Dunn. So the fact that we saw him on TV was like, it was like, oh shit, Bugs Bunny. You just uh, you fucking Braun Strowman looked, chasing beavers out of the, the the production truck here. He was, he had like a hunchback, and he's like mm, running out of there. <laughs> Braun, Braun should have, Braun Strowman should have uh, kicked out Bugs Bunny a long time ago. Maybe should've. the show would have been better. But uh, I, I love the whole, don't get me wrong, I love the whole Braun Strowman looking awesome and, and beastly. Like, this is what they always should do with this guy. I just have one critique on it, thinking more of it now. Like, I'm thinking, I got a day to process it. They're doing all this for no point. We know what the end result is going to be. Kane is going to take the pinfall from Brock Lesnar. So they're going to do all this for no reason for Braun Strowman. And then Brock Lesnar is going to go on to WrestleMania to face Roman Reigns. And Roman Reigns going to get his triple crown. So, like, now, why even do this? Well, what's the point? If you're not going to put the Braun title on this guy. Dominant right now. But if you're not going to put the title on this guy, why even do it? What's the point? I don't get it. You need If you're going to do something, this is something that you do to a guy that makes, that, that leads to a title opportunity or leads to or a title shot that eventually gets him the title belt, which we're not going to get from Braun for a very long time. Um... Braun's just, he's in a bad place right now because he's got nowhere to move with Brock and Roman being there. He's kind of like, I don't know, do you think a move to SmackDown would be good for that guy? I hope, If it means putting him in the in the main title picture, then yes. If not, then what's the point again for a move? The only way Braun Strowman is going to get any momentum now or you're going to ride this momentum is he needs a title belt. Why hasn't the guy won a championship yet? The guy's the most like, dominant guy in the company and he hasn't won a title. And he's, and he's the most over. 
God, I'd be yeah, I, I, sure. I wouldn't be I wouldn't be pissed if they made him the fucking main talent instead of Roman Reigns, man. Of course, Roman Reigns is getting himself in the trouble. Looks like, and if he gets suspended again, that's going to be very very bad for Roman Reigns. Yeah, face of the company, eh? <laughs> if he gets suspended, dude. That's sixty days. That's literally the whole WrestleMania build. So uh, two thirds of the Shield gone. Wow. Uh, or just get Brock out of there and just let Bra- uh, Braun be Brock because at yeah. least you know he's there and does stuff. But yeah, that was that was basically Raw in a nutshell. SmackDown, which is really boring. I don't agree with them giving Bobby Roode the belt so early, but it is what it is. Uh, Michael Chow TV is in here, the podcast. What is going on, Michael Chow, guys? He has a wrestling podcast as well. Go check him out. He reviews Raw and SmackDown. He is the wo- the the host that ho- runs the West Coast. I apologize, Michael Chow, for that intro. I'm, I'm under the weather still trying to get this podcast done. Uh, he is the advocate of the Red Cup movement, he puts. And I'm here and I'm pissed. Yes, we will get to that when we talk about that. But let's talk about the A Show. In, uh, speaking of the A Show, it wasn't exactly A quality this week. We had its, uh, It had its ups and downs, that's for sure. So NXT, uh, as perfect as it's been lately, uh, it had its points this uh, this week where I'm like, mm, maybe something would have been different, would have made better, and would have been better. You know what I mean? I know. Yeah, sorry, I'm just I'm looking at this tweet Carmella put out seven minutes ago. Somebody asked, "Are you and Cass still friends?" And she put yes with an exclamation mark and a heart. Oh, neat. Oh, sorry, but yeah, NXT. Ugh, it was just there were some parts I really didn't like about it. And we'll get into that when we get through it. So we'll start off the bat. We started out with uh, Heavy Machinery and ty- uh, your boy Tito Sabatelli and Riddick Moss. Riddick Moss still looking like a bum. Like, have a shave, kid, if you want to be with Tino. <laughs> really? You don't, you don't think he's... Uh, he doesn't he's... fit in with him. He, he he has long hair. He has, like, a terrible goatee. Like, he just, if he wants to fit in with Tino Sabatelli, he's got to, you know, have a clean shave. He does really look out of place. Maybe maybe if the current rumors of EC3 wanting to come over, maybe they'll pair EC3 and uh, Tito together because the guys Why? look literally... He said like, they look exactly yeah, like they, each other. They can literally be like the mirror image tag team. Uh, anyways, uh, they faced off against our boys Heavy Machinery. I guess is playing off their uh, little mini start of a feud they had in that parking lot that one week with the with uh what's his face tucker knight holding the camera that really awkward promo they had does anyone uh, have like more confusing facial expressions than otis dozovich <laughs> i don't think so <laughs> the guy like that's probably like his smiling face is like, uh, up the uh, eyes uh, and, uh, we still don't really know what that is but uh, and he's into the match. Uh, yeah. Heavy Machinery basically dominated most of this match. Uh, we had the slight comeback by Tito and Riddick, and we got something out of the blue, which was really shocking. Um, yeah, where the hell? Where the hell have both of these teams been? Cuba, Cuba Girl, Heavy Machinery, and Tito. But again, it's an hour show. They have to fit it as much as they can each week. So I guess this is the time where they're getting their shot. Uh, I guess building off this feud, I guess these guys are just still going to feud with each other because Riddick Moss ends up winning this match with a dirty pin. The old uh, legs on top of the rope routine and getting dirty pin for the win. Over Tucker Knight, yeah. Interesting. So obviously this is... I I expected them to win the first match of this feud because obviously Heavy Machinery's got to, you know, get back at them, you know, after the cheap, dirty win. But I I like Tino and, and Riddick winning here. So it continues the feud. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Uh, I agree with Michael Chow. Just put uh, tonight was a mid card house show. They mixed in with pre recorded <laughs> segments and in ring promos for the main stars. Yeah, pretty much. But uh, I thought it was a decent opening match. Uh, I think is definitely telling the story between these two teams and how far it's going to go. It looks like it's not over yet for Heavy Machinery and Tito Riddick or Tito Riddick, Tito Sabatelli and Riddick Moss. <laughs> Maybe I'll just call him that Tito Riddick. Um, but yeah, hopefully it leads eventually when they get done at the performance center, it leads into a heavy machinery and a uh, war machine feud. I can't wait for that, man. Big signings out of today with uh, War Machine, Ricochet, and Candice LeRae at the performance center. So Yakamura, or sorry, it's something in the chat, but yeah, the machinery's going at it. War Machine and Heavy Machinery. <laughs> <laughs> the big machine tag team there. Uh, 
Next, we had an undisputed air promo. These guys are awesome at cutting promos, man. They're just they're just so fluent. They come off so good. It's just it's insane how much they can cut a good promo. Cutting promos about their NXT takeover matches. It was really well done. I get like an NWO feel from them when they're cutting their promos because they're kind of just like everywhere. Yeah, they're that. Well, that's like their their thing is like they're they're here to take over, right? Like that's basically what NWO used to do. Yeah, and they they always have an interview somewhere different too. But they're really, really good at doing interviews, man. These guys are really, really promo heavy, and uh, they do a good job at it. So they did a really good job promoting their NXT TakeOver matches this week, and I'm loving what's coming out of Undisputed Era, man. These guys are going to have a massive, massive year in NXT this year for sure. Um, we had a yep. – uh, right after, we had a promo video. Speaking of uh, Undisputed Era, a uh, promo video er, – a promo video of the Extreme Rules match between uh, Aleister Black and Adam Cole for TakeOver. Uh, this was really, really put together. We said this before, that the guys that, that put the promo packages together for NXT are actually really, really good at what they do. They like they make you get hyped for the match that they're, they're, they're portraying in the promo. And uh, they showed a lot of history of Extreme Wrestling in Philly, a.k.a. ECW. They showed a lot of footage and uh, examples from what happens in, in Extreme matches in Philly. So... It looks like they're trying to promote this match to be as really extreme as possible, and I think it will be with two guys, with Adam Cole and Aleister Black. I think these guys are going to put it all out in the line, and it just promo just gets you really, really, really uh, hyped for it. So I, I give my props to the NXT promo guys and the promo team that, that make these promos, man. They're really, really well done. Oh, yeah. They, they get you excited for the match, which main roster doesn't really do that. But it's a perfect type of match and perfect guys to have this for this match in a kind of a grudge type feud like this in like perfect, perfect type city of match. <laughs> philly yeah. man, like the house of where hardcore is born so this is this is really well done man like how they book nxts and <laughs> how are they gonna get this good and that's what i mean I, I always complain about it saying like how can the main roster not take any notes from this like do they really want to be that different like because <laughs> vince's like, way is the highway i guess <laughs> Anyways, we moved on here. We had uh, a match between Fabian Eichner and Roderick Strong. Mm, interesting. So, hmm. hmm. Yes, you're right, Michael Chow. They did a lot of tag team heavy. I think the Dusty Road class is going to come back. They have to bring that back. And he says the winner should get a title shot to take over WrestleMania. That'd be great. I think that'd be a good idea. So I'm hoping they bring it back. I don't. I don't doubt that they won't bring it back. It, it's a dusty thing. It, it rides with NXT. I hope they bring it back soon. It looks like they're they're promoting a lot of their tag teams. So uh, we'll see what happens in the upcoming weeks. Um, but we had Fabian Eichner versus Roderick Strong this week. Um, Eichner is being uh, labeled as this next level talent. He's labeling himself as that. Uh, looks like NXT uh, likes what they see in him. It's funny because Roderick Strong's theme song is called Next Level. <laughs> Puns, 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 puns. Um, but yeah, it lo- looks like they actually does love what they see in Fabian Eichner. Uh, I like what I see in him. He, he looks like he's a really good piece of talent. Uh, he was, and if you guys don't know, he's formerly in the Cruiserweight Classic. Uh, and since then, I guess the the announcers were saying that he's gained thirty pounds of muscle since uh, that Cruiserweight Classic, and it kind of looks like it because I really don't remember this big guy being in the Cruiserweight Classic, so I kind of well, believe that. he did have a match with Andrade C. and Almas a, a, a couple weeks ago and yeah. actually looked pretty good in it. Mm-hmm. So I, I like it. Now, he's, he's even beaten Johnny Gargano, so he's, he's had a good showing so far in NXT. So I'm hoping we he's, get a lot more out of Fabian. Yeah, right he needs to get in a feud. He needs to, we need to hear what he can talk about. Like mm-hmm. He doesn't really have personality right now. He's just good at an in-ring technician, yeah. so we'll see what they do with him from there. Yeah, and as for the match, it was really actually really good back and forth matchup. Um, Strong wins with the uh, lion tamer, which was really freaking weird. Yeah, he ca- catches him in that back, that back uh, breaker, and then grabs. He's going for like a Boston crab. I'm like, all right, he's gonna try a Boston crab submission, but then he he bends the leg, and he, he does it uh, the same way as the lion tamer was, and I'm like, okay, this is strange. Um, but yeah, <laughs> Roderick Strong with the Lion Tamer. Roddy just made the list. <laughs> Michael Chow, that's funny. Um, but yeah, interesting way to win the match. Uh, Fabian Eichner tapped out. I actually, me and Cappy at one point thought that actually Eichner was probably going to pull off the the win here at, uh, before the match even started. Maybe they were going to give uh, an, like another 
up on Fabian Eichner because he's already beaten Johnny Gargano before, and then maybe he gets another up by beating Roderick Strong. But uh, Strong coming out with the victory here, and after the match, he gets on the mic, so this is what it led into. Uh, Strong says that he's run through basically everyone in the NXT roster to prove himself, but he says he wants to prove himself against one man who's done the same thing, and he says he's talking to you, Lars Sullivan. Interesting, Great. interesting. Which is really, it, it makes you going, what? Like, it, it's it's a really confusing thing because you're sitting there going, okay, last week Lars Sullivan basically did the same thing, and then he calls out Killian Dane. Now this week Roderick Strong wins his match and then calls out Lars Sullivan. Like, is there going to be like a three way thing going on here? Like, we haven't what? heard we haven't heard a, a response from Killian Dane yet either. So, like, is next week Killian Dane going to have a one on one match and he's going to squash somebody and he's going to go on the mic and call both of those guys out? Like. Or like, what what's gonna happen here? Like, I don't know what's go what to make of this. It's one of those things where you're 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 scratching your head and they're leaving you like, not really leaving you suspense. They're leaving you in like confusion. Like to me, it just seems like they have all these guys and they don't know what to do with them because they don't. Again, they don't have a mid card title, so it's like these guys just if they're not in the main title picture and not in the tag team division, they're kind of just floating around trying to fight somebody for nothing. Like I don't know, I don't know what comes out of this. The like, guy. I yeah. Michael Chell, someone call the hospital and make a reservation for Roddy. Get him a nice hospital bed next to Leo Rush. Yeah. We're going to have a freaking whole That's triage, whole triage full of uh, Lars Sullivan patients here. I was like, Roddy, like are, you want a death wish calling this guy out? Like Come on, Killian man. Killian Dane makes sense, but what Roderick Strong's doing is just like, what? It's just, <laughs> it's just well like start, a <laughs> Might as well start digging your own grave, buddy. Yeah, my <laughs> bury a, a literally a literal buried alive match, but uh, bury that's what we yourself go- <laughs> alive match. <laughs> bury yourself alive match. <laughs> yeah, he's not. Uh, Lars Sullivan's not gonna dig the grave for you. He, he's gonna make you go in your own grave and di- put yourself in it and p- bury the dirt on top of yourself. That's what Roddy just did. Roddy's like basically starting the digging of his own grave right now. <laughs> oh but man, it was a good match, and Roddy, you know, he's. He does get over with the crowd, but again, his promos are kind of flat, yeah. and he doesn't really have a feud yet. But uh, they're going to have a Lars Sullivan Roderick Strong feud. I really don't know how Roddy can come out of that looking good at all. But I can't we'll even see. see Roderick Strong being the one. Could he? Maybe he could be the one to finally take down Lars Sullivan. And he uses that momentum to go up against Adam Cole. I don't know. I, I don't. I don't know. I don't know how you you go from here. So I don't know. If, there, if there's a big plan here. We'll have to wait and see. If not, then I don't know. Maybe this is one of those times where NXT creative is getting to a writer's block, and they're, we're just getting this right now. So I, not everyone can be perfect, right? So nope. Um, we moved on. We had a really, really good TM61 promo. So they weren't back this week, but we got a uh, a really, really good, well done promo. Basically, like a showing you how TM61, uh, basically like what they did with uh, Roderick Strong. And I thought this was a really well done uh, promo video, uh, basically showcasing where they come from. Uh, we saw like how they first started when they first started wrestling. They actually started out uh, in the same company together, wrestling each other, and they would actually put on some pretty good matches. It's kind of like uh, it gives you that uh, Cole Cabana and uh, CM Punk feel. How CM Punk and Cole Cabana f- started fighting each other and having these like prime matches, and then they tagged with each other after. Sort of what TM61 started like, and they eventually. Um, got to the top of their promotion and won the tag belts. Then they eventually transitioned over to New Japan. And if you guys know the, the stuff about New Japan Pro Wrestling and if you, how you start over there, you're starting out as a, uh, I think it's called a young boy. And basically you, you're the you're the bitch. You know, you, you get up in the morning, you clean the rings and you train and, and you, you watch the other wrestlers and you learn from the other wrestlers. Um, so they they went and did that. They achieved success over in New Japan. They won the tag team junior belts. Um and after that they were uh actually sorry i forgot that in between that they got uh they went to the harley race uh wrestling school and they got uh seen by harley race and harley race liked a lot out of them and it contacted wb for weeks on end trying to get them a, a tryout and uh they finally got a tryout from them and then we're going to get review get uh shown everything else uh in part two which will be next week of the tm61 story so i like what they're doing with this i like that they're trying to get more people behind tm61 because they're basically rushed into the tag team division when they first debuted not a lot of people knew who they were all about um 
and no, they were never given a chance to, to for people to you know really adapt well with TM61. So I feel this is a good way to get people in, invested in them and, and give them a shot. I've always been a big fan of TM61 since they've come here. I, since their first match, I've grown to love them. So I'm glad they're going to be back soon and we're going to get more out of uh, TM61. So, uh, yeah, it's what Michael Chow just said. Crazy that they were in the same tryouts as Reigns, Rollins, and Xavier Woods before they went to Japan. So, And they showed it in the video that uh, they even knew that these guys were way ahead of the curb than they were and they needed to train more. So I'm glad that... They show TM61 where the, not the got, not the hotheads going into the performance center and thinking that they are better than everyone else. They were the guys that saw that the actual people were better than them and that they were ahead of the curve than they were and knew that they needed more training. So I'm, I'm really glad that, that we saw that out of uh, the video in, of TM61. It, it's making my love for them growing even even bigger too. So um, I, <laughs> I've i gotten more into TM61 from watching that promo than I ever did in like the year that they were in NXT. That's what I mean. So I, I think I think that was really needed for them because I feel like people really didn't know what they were about and why to get behind them. Yeah, like they did nothing when they first came into NXT. There was nothing about TM. Like they didn't do any backstory. All they said they were this Australian-based tag team that come over from Japan and Australia and really gave them no backstory. So I'm I'm glad they're doing this kind of thing. And uh... that was really really well done. Tiffany in the chat. I'm excited for part two. Tiffany in the chat from Dad Ass Podcast. What is going on, Tiffany? They got a relationship based podcast. It's on a little bit of a hiatus right now, and hopefully they get back into the routine of things in the upcoming months. What's going on, Tiff? Um, but yeah, really well done video before uh, TM61. <coughs> I apologize. I need a cough there. Oh, God, this cold is driving me absolutely nuts. Ugh. Yeah, it's cold there, and I have a cold, Tiff. <laughs> um, after this promo, we had uh, Aaliyah versus Lacey Evans. Oh, my this God. Was... fucking terrible. This was just, what? <laughs> I'm like, I'm oh. I'm sorry. Lacey Evans is like the male ver- or the female version of Cassius Ono to me. Like, every time I see her on the TV, I just want to change my channel. To me, she's generic. <laughs> Her fucking ring attire is atrocious. She has bare... I, I don't really see what she's got as far as wrestling ability. To me, she's just an ex, ex-crazy ex marine chick that, you know, comes in here trying to be all classy. And I just... I don't get it. We kind of saw something after this match, but going into this, I'm like, why do I care about Lacey Evans? Why? Yeah. I, I, I'm really not really behind her either. I, I still have to wait and see. But uh, our girl Leah from Toronto, Ontario, Canada was in this match. She got some Holy TV shit, time she's here. on TV. Yeah. I, <laughs> she's one of our future endeavors of the, for 2018 preview for our NXT, <laughs> which is live on the channel. Guys, go check it out. Um, this is not really an exciting match at all. Uh, I didn't really – there was really nothing that stood out. We had a big right hand by Lacey Evans and basically knocked out Aaliyah, and that's how she won. Uh, so bad. Like, the way they ended this match, like, it was just like out of nothing. Like, Aaliyah just ran from the corner, and Lacey caught her with, like, a like a forearm. But, like, a three count for that? It was really just like a gateway to what we got next. Like, it really – it was just like – they didn't give a shit about what happened. It was just like, skip all this crap, and then we got – Evans cutting a promo, a heel promo, so we now we figured out that she's actually a heel, uh, basically saying she's here to clear house and calling everyone trash, like all the other women in the locker room trash, naming off Nikki Cross, Ember Moon, and she starts talking about somebody, which uh, we, we knew was Shayna Baszler, and speaking of the devil, Shayna Baszler comes walking out right behind um, Lacey Evans. And Lacey I was getting Evans, excited. I'm like, oh my God, Shayna, please. Please put her in, like, some kind of hold. Please just kick the shit out of this broad. <laughs> yeah, but Lacey Evans gets uh, not let to run away. Like, not she didn't really let Lacey Evans run away. She kind of, like, almost ran away. And then Shayna Baszler goes into the ring and takes advantage yep. of a downed Aaliyah and chokes the shit out of her out. Um, Amber Moon eventually comes out for the save. Um, gets on the mic and dares Shayna Baszler to try to bully her. I thought there's a really good, well done promo by Ember Moon. Like it shows a- another fierce character out of her. More, we're getting like more of a dominant force out of Ember Moon that we need as a champion. I think we really need yeah, something out of Ember Moon. She hasn't, she hasn't with really this. been doing anything lately, so I'm glad to see this comment, like this aggressive side coming out of her. Mm-hmm. 
Uh, Shane is basically saying, like, I don't have my ring gear. I can't come in there. I got my ring gear playing like a real natural heel, which is good because I'm, I, I want, I want to feel something out of Shayna as well. I know she's come from an MMA background, but I want to know if she's got some mic skills and she's got that uh, ambiance to be a heel, like a really generic heel. And she, she did it. She played off. She's like, Nah, I don't got my ring gear. You know, I do it on my own time. You know, I mean, I like that out of a heel. Um, Amber basically challenges is the one that challenged Shayna here. She's basically saying, like, I'll fight you anytime, and I'll bring my belt anytime, anywhere. And then uh, and she's going she gonna, to she, she'll bring my, her title any, anytime, anywhere to beat that ass. <laughs> and the freaking crowd was a bad beat that ass, beat that ass. <laughs> uh, that was great. That was probably the best chant I've heard from the NXT crowd ever. Um, but Shana's, like, yelling, uh, fine, take over Philly. Like, that's where. So... It's basically confirmed after we had uh, Regal confirmed backstage that this match is going to happen. Um, you had that ass. Tiffany beat that ass. <laughs> yeah, it was funny that they were chanting that. Yeah, it look, kind of looked like Lacey was calling Nikki, but she she started naming Ember Moon and uh, Shayna as well, Cuba Girl. So I don't know. Maybe I don't know if they, they could do a Lacey and Nikki. We'll have to see what happens. Um, now, what I said about uh, Lacey Evans was before this match happened. I actually liked what she did after the match. I actually really liked that heel promo and saying that she's above everybody. I'm okay. Now I see what kind of character she's got. She doesn't have a face character to me. To me, she had to be heel, and I'm glad they put her down that path. Maybe she can face Nikki Cross and Kari Zane. But I actually really enjoyed Lacey Evans' promo after this match. But, I mean, I'm glad she needed a change of character because what she was doing before was just stale as bread. Maybe we'll get like a Kari Zane and Lacey Evans feud. I don't know something. We need something out of this. We need something. We need, it needs to go go somewhere from this. But uh, Regal basically confirming backstage we got after that this match is actually going to happen. So it's going to be Ember Moon versus Shayna Baszler for the NXT Women's Championship at NXT Takeover Philly, which is great. Um, I'm all for that. Um, after that, after basically like confirming it, uh, Selena Vega comes out of nowhere and talks about uh, Gargano having zero chance at being Cena Almas at Takeover uh, Philly, and basically saying that uh, she knows it, Cena Almas knows it. Even she even points at Will Regal like you know it. Um, she says that Dream has a point and deserves uh, the shot better than Johnny Gargano, and she says Gargano should have to put a shot up against Dream. Uh, and basically saying, like, you, you know, Regal, you know it too, that that should be true. And then as she leaves, and she, if she's like, you want the garbage match of Gargano versus Almas, we'll be happy to oblige. I actually really liked this Selena Vega interrupting William Regal thing. Like, everything Selena Vega does, like, I can't even critique it. Like, she's, she's just great. She's like literally she, like the next, like, she's like the woman Paul Heyman, but better. She, I don't know, everything she does is meaningful to me. It is, but it, it, I mean, she, she, that presence that she has and her mic work is just so good. And the way that she builds her, her champion up is, is great. Yeah. So she's uh, a good promoter too. That's what I like. So she's going places definitely in uh, WWE for sure. Um, well, after this, we had something upbeat and I was excited. Literally, it was literally, we were just talking about it. We get No Way Jose on screen, and he's back, and he's saying he's returning next week, and 2018 will be his year. So No Way Jose, all righty, he's coming back. No Way Jose, No Way Jose, No Way yeah. Jose. Mr. Where the Fuck Are You Award of 2017. <laughs> uh, all right, that's something to look forward to next week. I love it. But love it. I want to I say that... We, I guess it was the second part of the taping from Atlanta this week because they did the two-week taping. And I, I found it interesting. I don't know if anybody else noticed it. But it, last week, which was basically the exact same show, Ember Moon came out and saved – who was it? Um, what the hell Dakota was her name? Kai. Dakota Kai. Thank you. So, And she was in like full-out like street clothes. And then this week she comes out. She didn't have a match in either of the two tapings. And she's in her ring gear this week. Like, did they make her change into her ring gear just to come out in this segment? 
I guess. Because she was in her street clothes. Yeah, just like a Shannon like... Baszler changed from her ring gear to her street clothes. Yeah, well, that's usually what you do <laughs> when you after you have a match, you change. But, like, Ember Moon changed into her ring gear to come out. Like, oh, she didn't even have a match. match? Oh, wow. I don't know. To me, I don't know if anyone else caught that or it's just me, but I just found that very weird that, like, <laughs> they tried to, like, play off the fact that they were two separate weeks, but they were both taped on the same night. <laughs> I guess that's what we're trying to do. But to me, I don't know. That, that was just something that I found pretty funny that she came out in her full ring gear. No, no way, she, Jose, for the I, Rumble. I hope so. I'll mark out if No Way's Way comes out the Rumble. Well, yeah. if you listen to our Royal Rumble How to Book, which will be out soon on the channel, mm-hmm. maybe you'll hear some predictions about that. Yeah, which we're trying to get through. I've just been sick, guys. I'm tr- we, 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 me and Cappy want to do a How to Book the Royal Rumble. We're going to get out to you soon. I just, I'm trying to get over this cold. It's really, really freaking hard to do this podcast even right now for me. So doing that's going to be a freaking uh, pain in the butt as well. So it's going gonna, it's gonna to come out soon, guys. Stay, stay, uh, stay with us <laughs> or bear with me at least. <laughs> um, <laughs> after this, we had uh, Gargano come out while the commentators were talking. Gargano just comes out to the ring uh, looking very, very pissed off. Uh, he says everyone doubts his abilities to be... This is actually a really, really good promo by Johnny Gargano, by the way. This is probably one of the best ones I've seen him cut uh, to date. Uh, he says everyone doubts his ability to beat Almas and that uh, even even Willem Regal think, he thinks that he doubts his ability that he can beat Almas at TakeOver Philly. He says this is not a fluke and that uh, this is his time and his time to be NXT, uh, the next NXT champion and accepts Velveteen Dream's challenge. So next week, he's going to put his shot on the line against Velveteen Dream, and the winner will go on to face Almas at NXT TakeOver Philly. Um, this was actually an awesome promo done by John Gargano. You could feel the emotion from Gargano here. Uh, you can feel like how genuine it was and how much this actually means to him and, and how much that he actually takes being the underdog. I, I love the story they're doing with Johnny Gargano here. Man. It, it makes you feel for this guy, and it makes you want... To get behind Johnny Gargano because he's like the Johnny ultimate Wrestling underdog, thing. and it's great. people and it was great when he came on to his promo because he said like nobody's taking me seriously and they think you know that this was a fluke and I'm gonna prove that it's not a fluke yeah, and even William Regal the GM of the show like he, he yeah. he's it's I love the whole underdog thing they're doing here it's great and it's great that he is playing off that and you know he's the perfect guy to have a match where he has to put up his opportunity on the line. Like, he's the guy that would do that. So I'm glad that they're putting that in place because it's it's believable with Gargano to try and prove himself. Mm-hmm. Not to fit, you know, he doesn't want to be the next Sin Cara. You're Dolph Ziggler proving to be, <laughs> beat Sin Cara, but he wants to prove that he can beat Velveteen Dream, who's a, you know, good opponent to try to beat. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um... When is that match going to be, by the way? Is that going to be next week? Yes, next week is the go home show for Takeover Philly, and the go home show is for the Royal Rumble. So, so they're going to have that. So they're going to have the Gargano and yep. Velveteen Dream match next week. Perfect. Yep. yep. <clears throat> um. So right after this, we had the main event of tonight's NXT show. We had the Street Profits versus Authors of. Authors of, and I'll even play it for you. Yes, authors of crickets. Oh, man. I honestly thought it was going to be better than what we got. I'm just very upset. Are you, hello? Oh, are you sleeping? Oh, I'm sorry. I just dozed off for about five minutes. <laughs> wow. Yeah, these guys are just. I don't understand why they keep pushing these guys. Like, I understand that they're this like dominant young tag team, but like, I don't want to see them in the tag team title picture again. Like, if they're not gonna, might as well just call them up. Like at this point, right? Give other tag teams an opportunity. Like these guys literally just bury every tag team on on NXT. They're basically like the Roman Reigns of NXT. You know, foreshadowing them being Roman's goons one day. And I don't understand why they did it to the... This would have been the perfect time for a big upset for the Street Profits. These guys built so much momentum leading up to this point. And this was literally the perfect opportunity. This is where you had to strike. 
this momentum with Street Profits. These guys are at the, the top of their peak with the momentum right now. This is where they should have capitalized on it and had them beat AOP. It would have been a huge win, and you would have had it. You don't even have to make them win at, at, at TakeOver. You can have them have a good match at Undisputed and have Undisputed retain. But this would have been a good yeah. match to, to ride uh, this Red Cup revolution, is what they're saying in the chat right now. Like, even a dirty, like, cheap win or, like, a roll-up, I would have taken that because it still wouldn't have made AOP look bad. Yeah. But, like, they basically just halted their entire momentum by having them, you know, basically get fed to Authors of Sleep. Literally. They they, they literally dominated Montez for this entire match. Angelo got the hot tag. It, it was all right. We got a small showing out of Angelo Dawkins, but it really led to nothing. And an AOP battle back, like they usually do, it was literally, like... Typical Roman Reigns fashion, man. <laughs> like, it was like it's literally like you have a typical Roman Reigns match, and you got a typical AOP match. Like these guys are literally getting built up to be exactly what Glorious Greg is saying in the chat: AOP's Roman Reigns security team. <laughs> and they just squash three profits, and they're and number I one really, contenders. I really don't like the decision here by NXT Creative to have AOP win clean over over these guys right now. Like I, I really feel like all the the air has been, you know, let out of the balloon of the Street Profits now. Literally. And it should be, they should have had the Street Profits win this week, and they could have added Sanity. It kind of looks like they're going to add Sanity to this match next week. We're probably going to get that added. This should have been, a, then you could have still had a triple threat. You could have had Undisputed Air versus Sanity versus Street Profits. Sanity, which are not, they're literally not a clear-cut heel or face. They're literally in between. And you have the baby faces and Street Profits and the heels and Undisputed Air. That, that You could have had a triple threat match like that if you wanted to. If Again, not, we already saw the 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 triple threat between AOP, Undisputed Era, and Sanity. We already saw that. So, like, why not throw a different team in there if you're going to do another triple threat? Yeah. This was terrible, and this was the Street Profits' first loss too. They were undefeated. Yeah. Then they lose to AOP. Like, squash sick. to AOP. Like this was. I. This is again. We always claim that NXT is perfect and they beat the main roster, but this is one of those times where I swear to God they had writers. Half the show was like on writer's block this week, and, and they really made a bad decision with making AOP over Street Profits here. And um, I don't know. I don't know. It was really, really, really weird. It's almost like they were on sleep mode, and they they kind of like it's almost like they let Vince run the show this week <laughs> for the second. To me, half they looked the like they were on autopilot. Yeah. It probably was, but bad decision here. I, I really, I'm really kind of pissed off for the Street Profits because these guys have done everything to get themselves over and get the crowd behind them, and then they go out there and lose to this team that doesn't need to win. They've already been tag team champions. They're kind of just floating around now. Like, can right. they just like get out of the tag team title picture for a while or get called up or something? And yet they're getting put back in again. Like, I'm finding a hard time right now to think of how you build Street Profits back up. Like, I, I can't think of a way that you're going to get these guys back in the momentum that they just got ruined. Like, it's it's tough to go back on that momentum train, man. It's, and again, it's, how do you have them say that 2018 is going to be our year, and then they go out and get squashed? Exactly what Michael Chow just said. Yeah. It was definitely not a good idea to do that. Definitely a wrong idea this week. <laughs> That's for sure. Um but that it's was gonna be show. hard to see. It's gonna be hard to see how they're gonna bounce back from that. Like, like it's just, mm-hmm. I don't know. Like, do they go up against? I don't even know. Like, I don't even know where you go from right? these guys. It's so I hard. I really to book wanted them, them to go for the tag team titles, even if it was just a one-time thing, to see what they can do. I really think they deserve that shot. Mm-hmm. So we'll see next week. We got the return. Of Noe Jose. We have the Johnny Gargano Velveteen Dream Match. Uh, we probably have a most likely you're probably going to have a contract signing between Shayna Baszler and Ember Moon of some sorts or some sort of confrontation. And uh, maybe we get the addition of Sanity into the match or not. We'll see what happens. But uh, I really don't see it being a very wrestling heavy match next week. No, no. I feel like it's going to be a lot of hype and promos. And I think the only wrestling, a lot of wrestling that we're going to get out of the match is between Gargano and Velveteen Dream and that's probably going to be one a really good match to the honest. They're probably going to give those guys at least 20 minutes. So expect a really good match out of those two heading into the go-home show for uh, NXT TakeOver Philly. Something that NXT does good. They put on good go-home shows rather than uh, unhyped nonsense that WWE likes to do for their pay-per-views. Two weeks away from the Royal Rumble, and we don't even know half the fucking roster that's going to be in it. Yeah, yeah why is Paul Ellering even there? If he doesn't, if he has nothing heelish for this tag team, like he's, he's just—he literally just a statue. 
He talks for them in their promo videos backstage. All right, go get the fucking car. Let's wheel the statue of Paul Ring out of here. You might as well just have a statue, man. <laughs> yeah, I might as well have the Andre the Giant Memorial Battle Royal Trophy out there. God, horrible. Paul Ellering just does nothing for me. The guy's just like, I look at him going like, I just want to punch a wall when I look at you. Like, I just I don't. And he does nothing for me. Like, yeah, I just be ever's AOP. Like, what? Yeah, the, the, Sanity's got to be put in this match next week. Like, it's, it's. I'm almost guaranteeing that they have to put them in this match. A heel versus heel for the tag teams, tag team titles. It's it doesn't weird. work. And Sanity got taken out two weeks ago. So they'll be back, you know, looking for revenge this and week. And as good I, as Unispirit Era has been, I don't see them pulling off a victory over AOP if it was just one on one. I really don't. They're not that they're not that established and not that great yet. So we'll see what happens. The authors of burying, that's what they are. Yeah. But uh let's get into that part of the show, shall we? And that is the list of ten. Ten. You know what? You know what happens? You know what's gonna happen? You just made the list! That's right. Welcome to the list of ten. That part of the show where myself and Cobra Cappy have our superstar or moment of the week that either makes the list or has a perfect ten rating. And as always, we will start off the one the only... Corporate Cappy. Hmm. Good things from NXT this week. I'm trying to think what I want to go with this. Ooh. <sighs> is your is your ten moment obviously from NXT? My ten moment this week. Uh. No. no. Your ten not moments from... not. No. Your your li- not your list. Your ten. No, my ten moment is not from NXT this week. Actually. Okay. So I'm going to give it to uh, Johnny Gargano coming out and cutting that promo. I think that was really needed for uh, Johnny Gargano as far as, you know, finally stepping up to the plate and not being this underdog or, you know, this person everybody feels sorry for. I really think that him coming out and saying that, you know, I'm not going to be taken lightly anymore I really and showing some aggression, I think that was really great out of Johnny Gargano. I think it was something we needed and – I was glad to see that uh, he's going to challenge Velveteen Dream for the spot next week, just to prove that he deserves it even more. I really, you really think feel the motion yeah. out of him. Like you, you, you sit there and you, you can feel for the guy. Like you, the yeah. way he came across, like that you can feel the anger coming out of him and how much this means to him. It was it's, really, it's, really it's, well it's done. It's real. It's it's real. You know, he really wants this. You can tell mm. that, and always being the underdog guy. So Johnny Gargano for coming out. And cutting the you know the good promo that he really needed to get him over, uh, for people to believe that he can face Velveteen Dream and Andrade Cien Almas, he gets my perfect ten. That's right, the perfect ten. Um, I go with my ten moment of the week. Uh, my ten moment of the week is actually going to go to Monday Night Raw, and not Monday Night Raw in general. It's not going to the show, so everyone chill. Um, my perfect 10 moment this week is going to the return of a finishing move. Yes, we all saw the what happened at the end of Raw this week, which shocked us all. Because I literally, literally was like, wait, what? Did we, what? Did he really just, Seth Rollins finally getting his original finisher back, the curb stomp, which they called it the blackout. Um, not sure. Uh, it it kind of goes well with him, I guess. Uh, anyways, uh, we got the return of the curb stomp. It looks like uh, we're finally getting his return finisher back because he went through two other finishers since then. He went through the pedigree phase, which a lot of people were still getting him shit for that. Then he, he made up that, uh, that spin around knee to the face. But, uh, I'm loving that they brought back the curb stomp. I thought that was a really, really um, awesome move. It fit Seth Rollins' style and, I, just, I I love that they're giving it back to him. So that's that's gonna be my perfect ten moment. So for them giving Seth Rollins the curb stomp back, it's a perfect, ten. you know, really a really bland perfect ten moment this week. But I don't know, I like it. Well, I I just I don't know if he gave Finn Balor a concussion or not. That's uh, I know <laughs> to be debated. 
Uh, my list moment this week. Oh, oh my God. lord, were there a lot to pick from? Uh, I could give it to SmackDown for being just completely boring as hell of a show. The way they booked the whole U.S. title tournament was just poorly done. I could give it to that. I could give it to the mixed mixed match challenge for not being you know televised for us non Americans out there. But my list moment this week is going to go unbiasedly as I possibly can to Sonya Deville beating Sasha Banks with a fucking kick. Whoa. What in the hell was that? She literally jumped from the middle rope and got hit with a kick in the stomach. Am I supposed to believe that Sasha Banks was completely knocked out from that kick? Are you trying to be- tr- tell me that she should be kicked out from that? The four-time <laughs> women's champion gets kicked out from or gets sorry, gets knocked out from a kick to the stomach. If Sonya Deville doesn't have anything better than that for a finisher, then I don't even know why she's on my TV because I'm not going to take her anywhere close to credible if that's her finisher. That is atrocious. That's like on Bailey to belly level bad. <laughs> so like, and again, Sasha Banks just beat Mandy Rose and Sonya Deville last week in the tag match. So she pinned Mandy Rose. So why this week does Sonya Deville come out and beat Sasha Banks? Why wouldn't they feed like Bailey since she's not doing anything, or even Mickey James to Sonya? What's the point of having Sasha beat Mandy last week and then come out and lose to Sonya? To me, it just doesn't make any sense to me. Like I just, to me, it was the wrong person that got that got pinned this week. I think that Bailey or Mickey James should have been taking the pin, because what was the point of? You know, if they're going to say that, burying Mandy last week against Sasha, why would they have Sasha then go and lose to Sonya? Mm-hmm. To me, it didn't it, – the correlation there doesn't make sense. Mm-hmm. So for the whole way that they booked this match and the way the match ended with that terrible finish and Sasha losing to – a kick to the stomach by Sonya, to me – You know what? You just made the list. That's right. It was just bad. Like I just didn't – I didn't get it, not to mention that the finish sucked. Mm-hmm. But – yeah, tie your hair up and square up. <laughs> uh, all right, so my list moment of the week. Is it going to Matt Hardy squashing Heath Slater? No. <laughs> um, Although, can we give a shout-out to Matt Hardy's delete Titantron? Yeah, that was great. They did such a good job with his Titantron. That was awesome. So shout-out to WB, whoever made his Titantron. That was beautifully done. I still love his theme music. It just fits him. I, I love it, man. I love getting the whole Woken thing. And I'm so excited for the rest of the Woken family in the yeah. future, man. People out there are like, oh, you know, I don't like it so far. It's like, he's faced, he's Slater. And Everyone I, relax. It's a build. You don't want, it, 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 they, people, come, it needs to the same people that complain that everybody likes to quick fire everything. It's a build. Relax. Slow the fuck down. It's going to happen. <laughs> he's got to get all his characters in place and, you know, yeah. then it'll come. Yeah. Um, so my list moment of the week, and I'm going to take it from what Michael Chow put in the chat earlier, and that is to those horrible Royal Rumble video camera promos we got this week <laughs> on SmackDown. You were so pissed watching that. I'm last like, night. what the fuck am I watching? What is this poorly edited crap quality nonsense we're getting that it doesn't get me freaking excited for the Royal Rumble. It's not getting me any excited. It's not getting. It's not showing any like enthusiasm out of these superstars for the Royal Rumble. It's showing no like. I, I, I'm seeing nothing. Nothing is like happening when they're doing these. I, I, it's just making me cringe when these doing. I cut it off. I turned it off as soon as I seen Randy Orton. I turned it off. I switched the channel. I wasn't having any more of that. After what I just saw with the women. I was just, it was horribly done. This was probably the worst creative idea I've ever seen. Why don't they just have them come out in the fucking ring and do it and just say it on the mic? Why do they have to have these stupid promos like this, man? It just, to me, it just ruins the essence of the Royal Rumble and it does not give me hype for it. It doesn't make me believable when these superstars, each of these superstars say that they're going to win the Royal Rumble in their way. It's like, no, I can't get behind it. It's just poorly done it was so yeah again it was so obvious to kill time i agree michael chow it's like it's a two-hour show and they're pulling this crap off so for the whole creative idea to do these stupid video camera promos you know what you know what you just made the list oh my god that was probably the worst thing i've ever seen (laughs) sarah logan's was bad i think i think randy orton's was the worst 
Like Randy Orton. <laughs> I'm sorry, I turned it he off, so me... I don't know what he did. <laughs> he made me not believe anything. You, was... I'm Randy Orton. I'm going to win the Royal Rumble for the second time or third time in my career. Oh wow. yeah, for sure. Oh yeah, okay. I'm, I'm picking Randy Orton. All right, my my pick set. I'm gonna redo all my notes for the Royal Rumble. Because I really need Randy you Orton. to say that to me to try to get me to believe that you're gonna win, Randy. You shouldn't need job. to do that. It was such a waste. Especially not even in the go home show. Like fuck, he's just terribly Again, done. I com- I complain about it all the time, but they've killed the whole essence of the- what makes the Royal Rumble great. They got rid of the whole um, lottery ball thing where guys yeah. would actually choose their numbers. They've gotten rid of the qualifying matches, so it's like, how do they determine who's in the Rumble or not? Like, how do you say like this guy's in the Rumble but this guy's not? Like. If, the, if you're going to eliminate people and say they're not in the Rumble, have them lose a match to somebody that's going to be in it, and that's how you qualify for the Royal Rumble. Exactly. It's not believable anymore. You you, you sit there and you're going, okay, I, don't, I can't get behind the Royal Rumble when these guys have done nothing to fight their way into the Royal Rumble for. They were literally just handpicked for no fucking reason at all. That's what the whole season of the Royal Rumble is. Like, the last three weeks we should have been having qualifying matches leading up to this. <sighs> just to me, they, they they've taken away things that are essential for the Royal Rumble. Yeah, it and like it's feel just like not as exciting anymore. anymore. It doesn't feel big. It's supposed to feel big. It starts the road to WrestleMania. It's your shot at the main event of WrestleMania. And you get you get and then you take away. And that's one thing that's I want to point out here. Parts to it. I don't think I think everyone's missing the point here. Isn't the winner of the Royal Rumble supposed to main event WrestleMania? Isn't that what it is? Is that what they? Is that what they? Is that what they? Is that what they? What they, they build it as, or are they building it as just a championship opportunity at WrestleMania? Have they stopped saying that, or are they? they are they still saying the winner gets to main event WrestleMania? Because if it does, and Shinsuke wins, and they don't put him in the main event, then what's the point of even having the Royal Rumble anymore? <laughs> I just, I don't know. To me, to me, like... uh, to me, and it, most of the time, it's never in the main event. It's always like in the in the co-main event, or even last year, Randy Orton and Bray Wyatt was like in the middle of the card. Exactly. <laughs> the only time it was in the main event was for who? For Roman. Everything for Roman. Yeah. Um... He's going to be number thirty in this damn thing. <laughs> I wouldn't be shocked. Would not be shocked. Um, yeah, but the, the, well, there's critiques about the women's one too, Michael Chow. I mean, again, they don't need 30 women. Like, they don't have enough people on the roster to make it 30 women. It should have just mm-hmm. been 20 if you're going to do it. The way they built that is just a bunch of politically driven garbage with Stephanie McMahon, like we say every week. It's like the head of the whole thing. To me, they just they, – they ruined whatever, you know – Exciting factors could have came out of that. To me, they they ruined every part of that. So, let's get right into the tweets, shall we? The tweets. Your fan tweets out there, ladies and gentlemen. If you guys want to tweet us during a show, all you have to do is look out for the tweet on No Holds Barred Wrestling Podcast Twitter, and I'll read them right on here in the show. I'll read your thoughts. I'll read your questions. Anything you have to do with NXT. So, We'll get right into it, and we'll start off with Cuba Girl one two five. She puts, "Do you think TM sixty one will turn heel at Takeover? Do you think they will target Undisputed or the Street Profits?" Interesting, interesting. I think we're gonna have to wait to see what we get at the end of the promo we get next week. Um, to me, out of the promo we got tonight, I don't see a heel turn. That'd be a big shock. Maybe something I'd be down for. It'd be like a really big turnaround. Like these guys are getting built as this next babyface tag team in this promo video, getting people to like them, and then all of a sudden they turn heel. No, it's, to I mean, me, there's there's no way in hell you can have a promo like that, and then have people want to turn on them. You don't think so? Like a big giant swerve? They've never done it before. Yeah, I think but, it's, it's. But wasn't that whole the point of the whole promo thing was supposed to get people behind them? Yeah. It's an because interesting it, idea. It, it's a, it, I don't think it'll happen either, but it's a very interesting idea. I think it's something that's not hadn't been done before. That definitely something NXT would probably test out. Yeah, I mean it's interesting. Cupid Girl Creative. Yeah, Cupid Girl One Two Five Creative. Interesting. Send that idea in. Maybe Vince will listen, or Triple yeah. H. <laughs> 
Um, her next tweet, with Ricochet and War Machine coming in, who would you want them to go up against? My picks would be Sanity and Velveteen Dream. I, I You guys already heard what I wanted. I wanted to see War Machine and Heavy Machinery go at it. These two giant teams that fucking just go... And, they're literally almost identical. I think War Machine's a little bit more athletic than War Machine, but I think these guys can put on a really good war. Definitely, like a they can definitely build it as a big giant tag team feud with each other. So uh, that'd be nuts. I think that's what I would pick. And as for Ricochet, you know, there's so many guys in NXT I'd love to see matches with, and I, I'm excited for Adam Cole, Roderick Strong, Johnny Gargano, Velveteen Dream is definitely one of them. Uh, I'd love to see an Aleister Black for sure and Ricochet go at it first. I think those two would have a fucking sick uh, feud. So uh, I'd love to see that. Uh, I'd, I'd, so I'd pick uh, War Machine and uh, Aleister Black for my two picks for Ricochet. Or I'd pick uh, sorry, Heavy Machinery and uh, Aleister Black for my two picks for Ricochet and War Machine. Um, Cuba Girl in the chat saying, JD made a point that scares me, but there to be on keep on showing John Cena winning the Rumble. I don't think Cena's going to win the Royal Rumble. I really don't think so. That's really... I think they're just doing it to get promotion to the Royal Rumble because Cena is coming back and he's in it. So, um, But yeah, those would be my two picks for Ricochet and War Machine to go up against first when they uh, finally debut in NXT. Uh, any input from you, Cobra Cabby? Uh, yeah, I'll go with Heavy Machinery and War Machine. you got to have the Battle of Machines. Yeah, <laughs> And then... Ricochet versus Leo Rush. Oh my god, dude. You know <laughs> that would be like match of the year for sure if that ever happened, man. These guys would go absolutely nuts on each other. <laughs> and Leo Rush, man, I, I really hope he, he, he bounces back after what we seen last week. <laughs> yeah. Lars Sullivan just adding to his, you know, buried list. Yeah. Looks like Roderick Strong's about to etch his name on there. He's writing uh, his own name on the buried <laughs> list. The next tweet by Cuba Girl, she puts, Since my fifth husband, EC3, is out of impact, do you think he'll strive on NXT or the main roster? I think NXT because he can have a really good showing with everyone on the NXT roster, also because him and Dream would be a funny to see. Yeah, I've heard EC3. I haven't looked more into EC3 as I should have. I've only half looked into him. I know he's been, he's could, he cuts funny promos down in TNA, so uh, I think something out of a EC3 and a Dream would probably be a good feud if he ever came to NXT. Um, if not, like I said before, I think him and Tito Sabatelli could put on a good uh, tag team together. Definitely better than Riddick Moss. <laughs> I, think I mean, Cobra anything's Cabby better than Riddick Moss at this point. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, we'll see what happens. I uh, don't know. Maybe EC3 will go somewhere else. We'll have to see what happens with uh, EC3. But thank you, P- Cuba Girls, your thoughts and questions as always. Thank you very much. Uh, next tweets come from our old 2016 Twitter fan of the year, Michael Chow at Michael Chow TV. He has an awesome wrestling podcast as well, guys. Go check him out. Oh. He puts. <laughs> uh, this was such a great show where pretty much the mid Carters had the matches, but they still made it interesting. Why can't the main roster do that? Yes, why can't the main roster do that? <clears throat> Thoughts on Shayna Baszler versus Ember Moon at TakeOver? Is it too soon? Should Shayna have earned a title shot instead of being thrown into the title match after choking out the most of the women's division? Hmm. That's an interesting question. Um, I think... Uh, I just I wouldn't see one wouldn't, wouldn't see another match that you would try to put together for NXT Takeover Philly. I think if you weren't going to have Shayna Baszler and Moon go at it, I think you would have had to cancel the women's match in general. Maybe you would have had a number one contenders match. Maybe they should have done number one contenders match between Shayna and someone else at Takeover Philly. Maybe a rematch with Kari Zane and have Shayna beat Kari Zane. Yeah. Um, but again, like I was saying in the chat and what I said last week, if a feud isn't like important and a match isn't important then don't put it on the damn card just leave it off the card yeah. like it like unlike the main roster with their garbage pre-show matches that you just throw together like that doesn't need to be on pay-per-view why the fuck do i care that that's on a pay-per-view mm-hmm. i don't so if there's if they have nothing for them don't force and rush a, a stupid match or a stupid feud just keep them off i'd be happy with you keeping it off if there's nothing to do with them that is going to be interesting and want to invest your time into that. Mm-hmm. 
See, with me, oh, I'm so on the fence that if they should happen and take over, if it's too soon or not. I like it, and I do, I do agree that maybe Baszler and, like you said, Kari Zane should probably go at it one more time for the number one contendership, and then Baszler finally beat Kari Zane. To me, like, how are you going to book this now? Like, is Ember Moon going to have a one, basically a one or two month title reign? Like, she's not even going to defend her her title once. And she's mm. going to get, she's going to lose to Shayna, and you can't have Shayna lose clean to Ember. Like, mm. that, that would be stupid. So why even have the match this quickly? Yeah. I'm still on the fence about it. I'll, maybe I'll change my decision next week. <laughs> to me, I don't, I don't like having the match this soon. Like I said, number one contender match would have made more sense because why does Shayna Baszler automatically get a title match now? Yeah. And Michael Chow, and lastly, where is the iconic duo? Get the milk carton ready. I think uh, they weren't on the show. Yeah, I think, I think all signs up. are pointed to, yep, Royal Rumble debut. Yeah. I think they're going to get called up, and we're finally going to get the iconic duo on the main roster. And they need to go to SmackDown. Like, yeah. SmackDown's women's division is fucking atrocious. Besides Charlotte and Carmella with the money in the bank, I have no other investment in any of the women on that show. I think they None. do. I think they fit SmackDown more, to be honest. And oh, the, the Riot Squad, man, the, this is just a failed faction from the start. Mm-hmm. I don't give two fucks about the Riot <laughs> Squad. Like, at least Absolution... They're actually, you know, look like a legit faction. The Riot Squad? No. <laughs> I, I, I don't care about about Ruby Riot being a leader. To me, she's not a leader of a group. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And Sarah Logan hasn't proven anything to me yet. Lib Morgan got that nice win this week. But, yeah, the Snore Squad. Thank you, Tiff. Hold up. We have a last tweet from Michael Child. This is my last one because the injustice just occurred. I know normally never complain about NXT, but the authors of Boar going over and ending the Street Profits undefeated streak was the wrong call. Speechless. Hashtag justice for the Red Cup. Hmm. We definitely agree with you with that tweet. Justice for the oh. Red Cup, indeed. Justice for Ellsworth level. No. Absolutely not. <laughs> no. How dare We're you gonna... bring up that name? Well, I'm just talking about justice, so... I mean, justice for Ellsworth coming back, just as yeah, much yeah. as justice for Red Cup and Street Profits getting, you know, not buried by AOP. All right. So we'll move on to the last tweet, and that comes from our 2017 Fan of the Year. It comes from our 2017 fan of the year, and that is a glorious Greg with his glorious theme song. Guys, he won our 2017 fan of the year. And if you want to win our 2018 fan of the year, all you have to do is interact with us on Twitter or interact with us live in the chat on speaker, and you're automatically eligible to win Twitter fan of the year, and you get to have your uh, theme song played before every one of your tweets. And obviously, glorious Greg chose the glorious theme song of Bobby Roode. And that awesome remix version that I found. Um, uh, actually, he didn't choose it. Like I said last week, you nope, chose it. No, we're not talking about that. Nope, 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 nope. <laughs> Anyways, Glorious Greg's tweets. Man, Heavy Machinery, they're funny, and they're going to get over with the crowd. Plus, Tito Sabatelli has potential. Ooh. Glorious Greg showing love to your boy, Tito Sabatelli. Yeah. yeah. Hashtag dump Riddick Moss. <laughs> Hashtag dump Riddick Moss. Fucking guys. <laughs> List. Yeah, we got to get that trending on our, our podcast, guys. Hashtag dump Riddick Moss. It's got to happen. Um, or drop Riddick or Moss or some mm-hmm. shit like that. Shayna Baszler is just a badass in that Lacey Evans promo I enjoyed very much. And man, Johnny Wrestling is something special. That promo got me hyped for next week. Definitely agree with you, Greg. Uh, yeah, Shayna Baszler. Good promos looking, this week. Such good promos. Even Lacey Evans cutting a good one, finally getting something yep. out of her. Uh, yeah, like Johnny Wrestling, like Lewis Greg says, something special. Again, something special at like Johnny Wrestling. Really feel for that promo. Um, 
And Gloria's great last week. I can't believe ALP won. I feel like the Roman Reigns security team shouldn't have won that match against the Street Profits. I would have preferred the Undisputed Era versus Street Profits. I think everyone would have preferred um, that match. Michael Shell qu- uh, tweeted on top of that. You see what happens when Triple H goes to the bathroom during the show and Vince slips past the NXT security. <laughs> or Vince or Kevin Dunn comes into the production truck because yeah. he got kicked out of the WWE he, one. He gnawed his way through the wood and got to, his, uh, <laughs> got to that production truck. Ooh, NXT, what's that? Yeah, let, me, let, me, let me get my teeth on, sink my teeth into that one. <laughs> uh, but yes, thank you, Glorious Greg, our 2017 Fan of the Year. And thank you for your thoughts, as always, Glorious Greg. We appreciate them as well. And we hope you like the theme song we chose for you, and the glorious Bobby Roode theme song. His dad, his self, self-proclaimed greatest dad. Um, um, what was I going to say? And we're going to be bringing back the... Um, Twitter fans of the month. We kind of slacked off in the last couple of them, but yeah, for 2018, yeah. we got to start them again. Yeah. So we're bringing back Twitter fans of the month, guys. So all you have to do is interact with us, and you'll automatically, again, same deal. You interact with us with that month, you automatically get considered for Twitter fan of the month. And uh, I don't know, maybe we'll give you a Twitter shout out. Maybe and, I'll make, make a graphic award. I'll do something special for that Twitter fan of the month. And, you know, the more Twitter fans of the month you win, the more you might be eligible and considered for a Twitter fan of the year. Oh, there you go. There you go. So you heard it here and, first, ladies and yep. gentlemen. And Greg cannot win. Yeah, Greg, you are excluded. Sorry. <laughs> you have Twitter fan of the year, so you got to mm-hmm. spread the love. Spread the, spread, spread the love here on the podcast. Yes. But uh, speaking of podcasts, I think we're winding it down. I am winding down to be going to bed and burying my head into a pillow as I think about AOP winning tonight and Hopefully trying to overcome this sickness so we can get some more stuff out to you guys. Again, we're going to get the How to Book Royal Rumble out to you guys. I also have another How to Book, which is going to be something completely different than what we usually do with the How to Book thing. It's basically is how we go, we would book the road to WrestleMania from Royal Rumble to WrestleMania. That is going to be coming out to you guys soon as well, so stay tuned for that. Uh, I'll try it. And when I get better, I'll try to get some 2K content. I know I tried to get some last week, but the cold just came out of nowhere and smacked me in the face and... Literally, I, I'd love to do that 2K commentary, but I need a voice for that, and I basically barely had a voice for this one. Like right now, it's literally on the verge of dropping. So, um, yeah. Tiff wants to see some more Finn Balor matches. Yeah, yeah Finn Balor. <laughs> but anyways, guys, that is going to wrap it up for an episode. We are episode number 86. We're almost at 100 of the Lowdown Show right here on No Holds Barred Wrestling Podcast. Your Canadian wrestling podcast that talks about NXT and WWE and no holds barred on anything we say, pun intended. You can follow the podcast on Twitter at no holds barred WP. You can also follow myself at Real Kyle Masters, and you can also follow my corporate host at Corporate Cappy on Twitter as well. You can also follow the podcast on Instagram at no holds barred WP, all one word. Please go check us out on there. Any video version of this podcast? <laughs> oh God! <laughs> <coughs> Sorry, guys. <coughs> Oh my god, I actually had like a cough attack. You can listen to, watch any videos of this podcast on YouTube, youtube.com slash NHBWR, and make sure you hit that subscribe button and that bell icon for all upload updates. I'm your host, the self-proclaimed greatest host, Kyle Masters. I'm always joined by my co-host, he's the blissful boss, Mr. Corporate himself, Corporate Cappy. Please, God, let Raw 25 bring me some satisfaction. <laughs> and we're always reminding you to keep it. On the lowdown. Yeah.